Welcome to CPR Chat. I'm Keith Lurie. Back in the summer of 1987, a patient came into San Francisco General Hospital who had had a cardiac arrest the night before. And I met this gentleman on a Sunday morning during rounds. And he was sitting in bed. He was in his mid-60s. And his 22-year-old son explained to us how he had plunged dad's chest the night before with a toilet plunger and revived his dad. Wow, we said, that's a wild story. Why did you do that? Because it works. How did you know it worked? Well, they had used it two weeks before that, and it worked then. So this 65-year-old man from Iran got an angioplasty of his left anterior descending coronary artery in that admission. And the intern and resident and I went back to our little residence room. We talked about this funny story, and we realized that it was actually quite remarkable. For reasons unknown to the family, they had plunged dad's chest. And we speculated at the time, if you push down and pull up, maybe you'll pull air in. When you push down, you push blood out. That concept we eventually embedded in a little letter to the editor, CPR, the P stands for plumber's helper. And eventually we realized that this index case was a turning point in the history of our understanding of the physiology of CPR. Traditionally, we rely on just passive relaxation of the chest. But it's during the recoil phase that blood returns to the heart. And over time, we realized that since circulation was so limited with conventional CPR, effectively just about 15 to 20 percent of normal, especially over a long period of time, that active compression decompression that you can obtain with a suction cup on the chest enables you to turn the chest into an active bellows rather than a passive one. And by pulling up on the chest, you create a vacuum inside the thorax. That concept was embodied by AMBU shortly after they read that letter in JAMA and to the first active compression, decompression CPR device, which in the United States we call the rescue pump, and in Europe they call it the cardio pump. And we've been evaluating the benefit of active compression, decompression CPR ever since. The concept is embodied in the rescue pump. It's embodied in the Lucas device. But the real benefit is when you harness that vacuum by coupling the concept of active decompression with an impedance threshold device, which we also call in the United States, the rescue pod. That combination enables you to pull up on the chest, impede air from rushing into the lungs, and create a greater vacuum to suck more blood back into the heart, to triple circulation compared to conventional manual CPR. That device combination has been shown to lead to 50% higher survival rates in patients a year after their cardiac arrest. So that pretty wild story from 1987 led to the discovery of active compression decompression CPR and the first significant advance in the field since CPR was first described by Cohen Hoven and colleagues in the same journal, JAMA, in 1960.